So welcome back to a new Game Stuff episode in the year 2020. I will never get sick of saying that. The future is today. I mean, in the 80s, if you had told me that I'd be alive in the year 2020, I'd be like, really? Is it Blade Runner? Flying cars? No, we don't get that, but we get a lot of really cool video games and things like that, and that's progressed quite well. And today, I just thought I'd look at some of the things that I picked up before Christmas that arrived from companies and that I personally bought. I thought I'd have a look at all of this stuff, and we're gonna start off with something very special here. Now, as you know, I had my friend Andrew up uh, to stay with me for about a week, and every year we also give each other presents, but he lives in California. I sent him Link's Awakening, that was his present, because that game is so great, I knew he wanted it. So that was a done deal from my side. But, when he came up, he gave me this. <laughs> a coupon box! No, this is how he wraps it. This is how I know he doesn't really buy a lot of presents for people when he's using this kind of wrapping paper. I loved it. So he said to me, he said, you know what, John? You can do an unboxing of it on the show uh, to see your kind of re reaction to it. So I thought, okay, let's do that. And I've saved it to now to do this. So let's see what this is all about. I have absolutely no idea. So here we go. Free groceries for a year. <laughs> Oh my god. Oh, that is so funny. It's so funny, Andrew, because I go to Toy Traders, this great toy store here in Vancouver, and they always have these figures. Look at them right here. Alien vs. Predator, Dutch and Lynn. This is from the Alien vs. Predator arcade game. And so they made figures of all these characters, uh, the Predators and the Aliens and the Colonial Marines. Uh, on Earth here. So those are really cool. Uh, I think her name's Lynn Kurosawa. One of my favorites from that old Capcom arcade game from back in the day. That, you know what? I could tell it was some kind of toy or something like that. Very cool, Andrew. I love it. I'll have these characters out a little bit later on. That's, that's really cool. Yeah, I like it. Okay, next up, something arrived. Oh my God, it must be a couple of months ago and I haven't got around to showing it yet. As you know, in 2019, one of my favorite games of the year was the Ninja Saviors. Yes, on the Nintendo Switch, on the PS4, on a lot of different systems. I love that game. It's a kind of a, a reimagining of the Super Nintendo game, which was a reimagining of the arcade game. And so there's a company called Strictly Limited. Uh, they had a very limited number of these uh, that came out. It is the Ninja Saviors Return of the Warriors Tuned Collectors edition and this is sealed i'm not opening it up because i already bought the game i already own the game i'm playing the game i love it but i got this because of the collectability of it and the number one reason because i'm a huge fan of the ninja warriors the ninja saviors i love this game i love the characters i love everything about it so this is one of those things that there's not a lot of ninja warriors merch so I was like, yes, this is going up on the shelf. This means a lot to me. And I'll put up a, a shot right now of all the things that come in this edition. It comes with some pins as well. And a little, a little card, a little postcard going on there. Here's the really interesting thing. It comes with metal chopsticks. They're, they're in here and a poster and, so, and also like a, a special case for the game and uh, this was a little bit expensive but completely worth it. Like, if you haven't played the Ninja Saviors, go out and get it right now. Please trust me on this. I, I will not steer you wrong. If you like side view action games, uh, kind of arcade style games, you'll really love this game. So that was really cool. I can't wait to put that up on the shelf. Now also, before Christmas, uh, me and my friend Andrew were walking around Walmart and I'm telling you, it's so good just to wait on video games. Just wait on them at times. If you can't afford a lot of them at the time, just wait because they always drop in price. This is no different. In Walmart, I got a copy, a sealed copy of God of War on the PS4, $10 Canadian. I think that's like a dollar American, no, but this is uh, a really great game that I got sent a code for by Sony. I always want to pick up the game and I waited till it got a little bit cheaper. Everybody should get this game for $10. Everybody. Great action game. I mean, and the story is really good in the bonding between the two characters there. There's a lot happening here and $10, you can't go wrong. 
Now, I gotta say this, I saw this during the Black Friday sales as well, and I picked this up, I think this was uh, a little under $15, The Evil Within 2. Have any of you played this game? I think a lot of you have. What do you think about it? And I was talking to Rob, he had started to play uh, this game and he was really kind of getting a kick out of it. I have never played it. I've never checked it out. It, I remember it came out, kind of. it kind of went under a lot of people's radar at the time, but highly regarded game. A lot of people like it for the price. The price is usually a good way to get you in, right? So if we get, this, is, this is like $60, $70, I'd be like, no, nah, I think I'll pass. But at under $15, yeah, I'll give it a shot. So looking forward to trying that out a little bit later on. This is an interesting one. This is this is from uh, Limited Run Games. And this is kind of interesting because I didn't buy it for the game. I didn't buy it uh, because I have some nostalgia about it or any of those things. I bought it for the box art. Now listen to me, I have a huge reason why. I don't even know this game. Super Combo Man, a Smash Edition. Look at this, you'll be like, John, why why did you buy this game? What is this game about? I couldn't tell you. It seems to be like an, an action style of game, a side-scrolling thing uh, that you can do combos in. That's all I know. Here's the reason why I bought it. Because my good friend Hanzo did the artwork for it. Now, if any of you don't know, Hans was a, a friend of mine who came to live in Vancouver and he enjoyed the show and we started hanging out and we started drawing together every day. We we're uh, big fans of drawing like, manga and anime style and we got along so well that he basically lived over here every day. Me and Kim were making meals every day, he'd come over and he was a, a Capcom Udon artist as well. He did all of the costume designs, a lot of the costume designs for Street Fighter 4 as well. So we had a really good bonding time. And so Hans is a good friend of mine. So it was really neat to see the artwork uh, that he had done for this game. And I was like, I have to buy it for uh, my friend Hans to support that in any game that he works on. And so that is why I have this game. Great work, Hans, really fantastic stuff. Okay, we gotta go back to the summer here and Yes, I'm going to talk about nostalgia here for a second, and it's only last summer that I'm nostalgic for this game. I had my friend Jay Hooft up, a uh, big, you know, uh, friend of the show, a uh, really great guy. We've done episodes together and a lot more stuff than that. But during the time that he was coming up and he stayed with me for a week, we were doing some vacation style stuff and all of that, I got sent a review code. And it was a two-player game, which was wonderful. And uh, he's a big video game fan as well. We both sat down first thing in the morning and we played this game for hours upon hours and that is for River City Girls and I just want to show you this is the limited run versions I picked up the PS4 version and the Switch version because why not I love this game I thought it was so awesome to kind of revisit uh, River City Ransom but with two girl characters a beat em up style game kind of like you kind of choose where you want to go through the levels and there's a lot of puzzles in there and just pure beat em up action oh my god it's so good it's so good you, you'll have a lot of fun uh, with a friend I think as a one player game it's good but I think as a two player game it's awesome and it took me back to the 90s and that's why I'm nostalgic about the game is that I'm already thinking back to where me and Jay were playing this game on the couch and having a really great time kind of doing that kind of thing that we used to do in the 90s where you'd be sitting next to your friend playing video games and you know having a lot of fun and yelling at the screen and laughing and all of that and so River City Girls is such a wonderful game and it also came with one of the best things uh, about the game it came with the soundtrack. This soundtrack is legendary. I'm gonna harken back for a second here and uh, mention an old anime called Project Eiko uh, from the 80s. It's a really great old anime. One thing that this reminds me of with the soundtrack, the soundtrack really reminds me of Project Eiko because Project Eiko was a Japanese anime uh, movie uh, when it was released, but it had English uh, singing in it and it was really, really great and you could always understand uh, the singing and the, it had some a lot of meaning in it, you know, like, you know, that kind of stuff. And this game has the same kind of music and it's really stupendous. So River City Girls, I also want to get the vinyl record soundtrack for this. 
I sold out online, but I'm still looking because I like the music that much. Now, there is another game here from Limited Run. They seem to get me every couple of months, and I didn't even know what this game was. Had no idea. I went onto their website and I was like, oh, the shape-shifting detective? What's that about? And I started looking into it and I'm like, Oh, it's kind of like a choose-your-own-adventure investigation style of game that reminded me of the old Sherlock Holmes game. And the old game, it came from the desert. Uh, they were kind of like digitized characters and you could, you know, kind of choose where you went and stuff like that. And they would talk to you in real voice. In the late 80s, early 90s, that was a very big deal where now, with this style of game, they get real actors to play the parts. Now... I know this is going to be hokey, and I know this is going to be silly, but I totally watched the trailer for this and it sold me. I thought, this is the kind of game that I really want to play, and it reminded me of those old games uh, with the digitized characters from, the, as I say, the uh, you know early 90s, like it came from the desert. So this is really an interesting game that kind of came onto my radar in such a weird, unusual way. I didn't think I was all of a sudden going to be buying it from Limited Run, and watching the trailer a couple more times, but really has captured my imagination. I love, you know, games like this. Now, this got sent over from Retrobit. Check this out. The Metal Storm Collector's Edition. Does anybody remember this game? It was an NES game back in the day. And before, before I even got to this, I pulled out my old Nintendo Power that highlighted this game, and it kind of showed you a few of the opening levels in it, and I, I thought that was so awesome back in the day, and I, I love mecha-style games, and this is an interesting one, and what this is, is a collector's version of that original NES game. The NES game is in here, so I thought we'd just have a little look at it right here. Let's try to slide this off, and then, here we go, we'll have a look at the box there. Beautiful, beautiful box, and what a wonderful thing to go back to such an older style game and give it this kind of treatment. They need to do this with Fantasy Star, I'm telling you. Wow, this is great. We'll do the first thing here. It comes with a pin. I'll try to get that in focus there for you. There we go. Uh, we've got a pin here of the mecha that going on right here that you control. Now, does anybody remember the game where you jump on the ceiling and go back and forth and just blow the hell out of robots and stuff? It's a really fun old school game. And here we go. This is the M308 Gunner. And this is a little toy uh, miniature going on in here. I'll try to you see myself in the reflection there. There, I'll show you that. And we'll just kind of go along and go along as I'm looking in the monitor here. Just to make sure that's all good. Look at that. So there's the mecha in there. That's really awesome. Okay, and it comes with an envelope in here. We'll open up the envelope. And I do believe it'll say... Uh, collector's Edition, uh, 1,035 of 3,000. So that's the version that I got right here. But here's what I wanted to see. It's kind of a, a recreation of the original box, all in beautiful foil there. That looks really nice. Really metallic looking for such an old game. So. Definitely want to thank Retrobit for sending this over. This is so interesting to have these revisits back to the NES again. And this is one that I really support as well. This is Xeno Crisis on the Sega Genesis Mega Drive going on here. Have you heard of this game? Have you heard the news? This is really an interesting game. It's for a lot of different systems. It's for the Nintendo Switch, the PS4, the Xbox One, and it's also on Steam. So we'll go in here and take a little look at the box itself. Man, does that ever take me back. You know, it was just the Genesis's uh, 30th anniversary, and I pulled out my Genesis and I put it under the tree, and it was so nostalgic to see that there, and to get this is absolutely awesome. And we'll have a look at the inside. At, look at this. So you're 2020, and we're still getting Genesis games. Uh, this is a Mega Drive game. Isn't that so cool there? I love it. So you can pop this in and play some of that, and even the instruction manual. Look at that. So gorgeous looking. Oh wow, look at that. <laughs> Showing you all the different controllers you can use. That is great. And the different characters. Look at the artwork. Really applaud this game. Now, for anybody wondering, what style of game is it? It's kind of like Smash TV, where you go from room to room, 
but you play as like colonial marines from aliens and just wipe out all the aliens that are coming into the rooms and just blast the hell out of them with your pulse rifles and it feels so good. The one thing that I really enjoy is the sound effects. And the bosses are so huge and so awesome and so well drawn and I just love the attention to detail. This is really one that you should definitely look up. I'll put a link down below to check this out for anybody who's interested. And here's another thing as well. The soundtrack is absolutely legendary. Love it. Really takes me back to the good old days, but yet it creates a brand new music for now. It's so funny whenever I do these episodes, they're so full of all the things that I absolutely love from the present and the past, and this is no exception. Oh, do you think I'll dislike this? Do you think I'll dislike this? The Metal Slug, The Ultimate History by Bitmap Books? The answer is absolutely not. This is such a great book. This is the ultimate book on Metal Slug, on the Neo Geo, and one of my favorite games of all time. I put it in my top uh, 100 games because of the beautiful artwork, and look at all of this stuff here. They go back and show you a whole bunch of other older style games. I think that's in the hunt right there. I just show you the level of design that they were doing, and kind of the build up uh, into Metal Slug, and you cannot beat these levels. Look at this. This is a work of art. If anybody ever wants to argue about me, you know, with that video games are not art, I will just say you're absolutely wrong. Video games are nothing but art. Then they're the finest art as well. Like, I mean, look at all of this. All hand-drawn art, incredible. And just look at the beautiful character designs from back then. I mean, you can't beat the 90s for what they were doing down at SNK. It's just wonderful stuff. And you know what's really neat here, guys? They also have the Neo Geo Pocket in there as well. They have artwork for that. They have artwork for all of this stuff. And I mean, you cannot beat this book. This is extraordinary. If you're a Metal Slug fan or a Neo Geo fan, I'm telling you, just go and snag this book. And what's neat too is I love this stuff. And the, the making of sections showing you how they do a lot of the animation and how they planned it all up and wow nothing but impressed what an absolute must buy book love it to death but then again i'm a huge Neo Geo fan so wow here's another book that if you're a fan of the older school games uh, from back in the Super Nintendo, Super Famicom days you like that style of artwork you love the pixels like you know from this even into this you're gonna love this. The unofficial Super NES pixel art book. Okay, so what is this about? It's like, what is this about? And here's the thing. Oh, it's like, oh, it's another book on old Super Nintendo games. Hold on for this one. I was floored when I started going through this. Absolutely floored. Here we go. This, I'm gonna find some great examples for you. It examines all of the old pixel art. And they do it in such a nice way, and they go through so many games. So you get like Chrono Trigger going on there. And they go into detail about that, and they just, it's about showing the artwork. So it's like really huge pages of artwork, which I will always applaud. Oh, here we go. Final Fantasy III, when it was released over here. Obviously Final Fantasy VI in Japan. Look at that, all highlighted with such love and care and it's weird, it's weird getting older and looking back and all this stuff and just the more nostalgic I get as I get older and I think this is such a wonderful time of video game art. I mean, even look at Earthworm Jim, lovingly created there, like, you know, artists sitting behind these little screens creating beautiful artwork and matching all the colors and getting it all right, I mean, so awesome and Super Metroid going on there. Love it, love it to death. Isn't that wonderful stuff? And I really, really appreciate the older style of games. And look at that, we got some R-Type, we got some Twin B going on in there. Is that Space Megaforce? Uh, oh, Super Alista. Okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. But that is, that's so good. Yeah, it takes me back, it takes me back to my high school days. You know, here, here's something funny. You see this character here? A lot of people said, oh, Johnny, that looks like you. I'm like, my hair's not that big. My hair's not that big. I, I don't even think it would grow that tall 
ever, but wonderful to go through all of this stuff and oh here, here we go. Um, here's another page for you guys. Really nice. The unofficial Super Nintendo uh, Pixel uh, book right here. Uh, check that out. Really nice stuff. If you're a fan of old school artwork. Now one thing I try to do on the show is always highlight some wonderful things that the fan community is doing and this is summed up in a wonderful magazine called Mega Visions Magazine right here. Some great artwork. This is covering Sega of the past and Sega right now and I, I gotta show you something in here. We're just gonna flip a few pages in because I was looking at this uh, yesterday and I thought it was so great. Any magazine that does a couple of page spread on Fantasy Star wins and I love the retro look that they're going for with all the colors and stuff like that. Some wonderful writing and I just love the coverage of what's going on here. Covering like the Fist of the North Star games happening there. There's a lot of love, a lot of care and a lot of really nice presentation with the artwork. And look at this covering, you know, uh, you know, Wonder Boy happening here and stuff like that. So I'll try to find a link for them down below so you guys can definitely check these guys out. And yeah, really nice stuff. And I really, I really salute these guys doing such a wonderful effort for the community. They're doing it for themselves and they're doing it for us because you know what? They hardly make magazines anymore. I, I remember going into my magazine store in the 90s and it just have a huge section of uh, video game magazines. Now, I can't find anything in there. It's like, like a, a special year Xbox uh, magazine or something and I'm like, uh, is there really a reason to buy this? And there realistically is not, for sure. So, okay, we're gonna get into our last item here. And uh, this is a little bit of a weird mixed bag for me. This is from Shout Factory and I ordered this right away. It's Big Trouble in Little China, the collector's edition of the Blu-ray. They've re-released the Blu-ray once again, and they suckered me in. It comes also with a bunch of uh, posters, but here is, it's got some brand new artwork going on there. But the one thing that I ordered this for was this right here, the vinyl uh, soundtrack. It's a, it's a small mini vinyl, and I'll pull it out. So I was so excited. I'm like, John Carpenter's music, oh my God. And I can't, I have it on CD, but playing it on my uh, vinyl record player, I love it. I just love listening to music. So I put this on right away and I was like, I can't wait, I can't wait. And I can't believe I'm saying this, but I was very, very disappointed with the music. It's kind of recreations of the Pork Chop Express theme and the alley war for anybody, you know, when they have the big uh, war in the alley scene. Uh, I was really looking forward to it, and it's just okay. It's composed by John Carpenter, uh, performed by John Carpenter, but it's kind of like a revised version, and I personally didn't love it. I didn't love it, so I'm just being honest about that. And so here is also the limited edition Steelbook. Now, you know, I'll say this, uh, Jay from Red Letter Media pointed something out online that I will never unsee, and that's why I think they've cut it right there. You can kind of see, and I'll put a better picture of this up right now, but the, the actual artwork is Jack Burton bending over and there's lightning, but Jay said, I can never unsee it now. The lightning looks like it's coming out of his ass. And I'm like, oh my God, who approved that design? See, they cut it off for the official version, which I'm thankful for, but I'm looking forward to sitting down. I, I think there's a, a few special new features on here. Totally worth my time uh, to check out. Big Trouble in Little China is one of my favorite movies of all time. It is absolutely incredible. So guys, there was a little bit to get through today. I was happy to share it with you. So anyways, guys, until next time.